thoughts about our performance in our first match? One, one draw? Well, um, everybody, looked <coughs> everybody looked back at the performance of the, 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 the young ladies up there throughout the qualifying series. So the mere fact that they had a clean slate will give us a very, very extremely high expectation. But the first match is always very, very traumatic. It's very traumatic. So what you usually go for is the same thing Keshi did. Careful. <laughs> Let me just make sure I don't lose any points. And then I start building up from there. So I think that's, uh, I, I, I'm looking at it from, a, from a, an artist's point of view, and maybe from coaching as well. His goal might be, we want to win, but don't lose. So in an attempt not to lose, you will go for a draw. So today it's really important for them to now begin to, uh, uh, to spike up their performance, hopefully without drugs. Do we, do we have any hope? <laughs> I do, we're I playing do. England. I do. I, I, you know, we, we are a very interesting country. We've got the best, best teams in the world under 20, best teams in the world, female everywhere. But when it gets to the national team, the senior national teams, everything just dissipates. I don't understand why. So I have a lot of hope in the age group <laughs> tournaments and the females. I am not, uh, I'm not a, a optimist when it comes to the senior national teams, irrespective of Keshi's performance. Yeah. So I still believe in these girls, and I believe they will do well. So uh, to, today, maybe I can make a prediction. <laughs> no, no, Dr. Bujiwe, um, we have spoken at length about our population and the percentage of young people in our population. What are we not doing right that we don't have these children interested in sports? There is something we're getting wrong. So is it that we don't have them interested or we're just not inspiring them enough? Because I would think there is a level of interest, but... Please. Let me put it this way. Go to this primary school or secondary school close by you. No, no sports what sporting facility they have. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's in a, maybe it's a block of flats. Some people are living upstairs and then they're using the grounds. Mm -hmm. People that have, countries that have moved to the high sport, part of sports, is they've done things greater than just primary schools. They have a lot of things they do that they put the facilities on ground. We went to South Africa to play a match when I was the doctor of Falconers. I got into the tra changing room and you could see under 20, 8 to 9.30. I mean, under 13, 8 to 9.30, under 16, 9.30 to 10.30. You could see the programs they had for their youths, and they had the facilities there. They're not. A lot of us got interested in sports today from school. Yes. We, well, staying close to National Stadium made me know a lot of sports. I could walk straight into the stadium, and then do taekwondo, you could do karate. When we were in school, we had... Um, our master would come and teach us karate. He had to play basketball. We could do all that, but there's nothing. I can't, some of our kids don't even. We work with sports, but we can't even allow them to go somewhere to play because we're scared of what they will turn to. Okay, <laughs> maybe let me ask Bookie then. You, you being a commissioner, I'm, I'm coming back to this sports administration thing. You remember Bolaji Abdullahi and the passion with which he drove uh, the sports ministry and all the departments and the federations and everything he took in terms of traveling with them consistently, being there to support them. And I've spoken with quite a few of these people. Now we have a new minister. We have a target that was put together by the federal government under Bolaji Abdullahi when he was there regarding a number of schools that will have sporting engagements and all that. Um, I think they said every school uh, by this year or at some point, every school will have sports facilities. And all of that don't seem to be happening. What is it that is stopping our government whether it's at the local government, state, and federal level, what is stopping them from engaging in making sure that whatever is a promise to the children to engage them sports-wise, knowing the power of it and how it could influence and practically change their lives, why are they not doing it? Well, let me first of all start by saying that the present minister is not rocking the boat. He's actually following the footsteps of Bolaji Abdullahi. He has not rocked the boat. Hence, um, strategic committees like the High Performance Committee is still there doing their work. Um, the truth of the matter is, is that right now, 
I do not agree with the position of Bukola or any other person that our young people are not actively taking part in sports and we do not have the facilities. I disagree, maybe because I was an administrator and I'm close to so many state administrators and federal administrators. What the children of today, what they have, we never, never had one tenth of. I don't believe that. Well, I'm telling you, in terms of facilities, let me give you a typical example. Even in your backyard, what Channels TV is doing for the kids in football, for example, the quality of football we've seen from your Channels competition never, never happened while I was in, in, in primary school or secondary school. Well, I went yeah, to a federal But how many of these schools government. have football pitches? You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. that ma majority of them are even privately putting up astroturf pitches in Lagos. Majority of them, if you look at the um, even public schools that um, states like um, Delta, Aquaibom Rivers, Lagos, if you look at the, the facilities they are putting in place, you'll be, you'll be embarrassed that um, you want to believe that we don't have those facilities. We do. Let me tell you what the, problems, uh, the, what the problem is. The problem is that we are not, as administrators, at the state and local level, behaving like disciplined people enough to put in place zonal coordinators, zonal coaches to go and tap this talent. They are there. But uh, sorry, let me let me just bring this in. When I was in Federal Government College, Kano, we had competition all year round. We play football, we play basketball, we play hockey, we played um, tennis, long tennis, we went out, we went athletics. We had athletics, long distance, short distance, the whole works. Football, cricket, principles was cup. Cricket was popular. <laughs> Everything. I can't think of a specific, maybe uh, baseball because it's not a Nigerian thing as mm. such. Mm. Maybe that. But practically everything we had, and I knew that, I still remember names like Sonny Sparkle and all the guys that were involved in that. And let, me tell you, well. let me tell you what, if you look on hindsight now, what you discover, you discover that one man, one boy, one classmate of yours actually played all of those sports. That's back. not true. That's I'm not telling true. you. No, that's you not think true. Back, that's you in see one school. that was talented that played almost all those sports. But what, the difference today, true. the difference today is that there is a huge spread. You have, you have take Taekwondo for